Hi, I'm Daz, and today on the bench is a Ferranti MBT 1089 from around 1962. This is a little bit different to what I've seen of at radios of this era. It's um, got a very, very different case design, and of course, the obvious thing is mains battery. That's different. You can often see that. Um, I have an Echo. And I notice certain resemblances, such as this medium and long wave switch, and the volume control, they look very similar, and that looks like a car aerial socket too. It does have a mains input, and the only thing I'm thinking that may fit it is I have an old shaver adapter that might just fit the main socket. It appears you have to push this um, socket up out of the way to insert it, but does look like this might just fit inside it so I'm gonna have a try with that and see if it does oh it certainly has that's fitted all I need now is a shaver socket to plug it in but you can get adapters but uh, my god it's fitting in well very well so that's good so let's have a quick look inside that's the design inside Zoom in a bit. You can see the main switch, mains battery switch here, position for a battery, which I assume is going to be a PP7 looking at the size. It's got the full size clips on. The board does look very much like the one in my Echo, so I guess it probably is. That was on a previous video. So uh, it'll be interesting to find out how it comes apart, this one. And look at how the uh, main supply is done. So removal looks like taking these wood screws out and also taking the tuning dial out with something that I'm not going to slip and scratch the uh, surface of the radio. That board does look very very similar I must admit. I wonder if the mains goes through this switch as well. <laughs> Extra caution if it does. It looks like you need to line these up again. Long wave at the bottom, better remember that, hadn't I? Ooh, big felt pad. Well, I got that wrong. These two wood screws here remain in, unless you want to take the front fascia out. So it was just that one. That's the problem. Sometimes you end up taking too many screws out, but uh, it's just one inside, I assume, now. And... Uh, this will release. Just take this one out now. We'll take the fascia plate off. There we go. So I almost got it right. Two screws too many, but oh, do I see hunts? Oh goody, it's full of hunts capacitors. Uh, there we go. So it's a transformer design, two transformers. It's a bit plastic there, I wonder if that's to stop some shortening. There's the ferret rod connection to the car aerial. These very familiar um, copper uh, IF transformers, etc. And it's got NKT164s in it. Ah. New market transistors. Place I'm familiar with. The bias adjuster. That capacitor's marked RS. I wonder if someone's already done some work on this already. And because I'm not a very patient person, I hadn't even tried it before I disassembled it. That sounds promising. About 30 milliamps. Okay, just noise. Very careful of this wave change switch. So just noise. No local oscillator. That's probably what's wrong with it. There's certainly noise there. No sensitivity to the wave change. So 
Perhaps the converter's not working. That might be what's wrong with it. Anyway, I thought I'd better do that before I completely disassemble it. Well, here's the complete guts out on the table. The volume control, the switch for the transformer. So I can see it is switched on the main side. As I thought, there is more circuitry inside this than meets the eye. I can already see that the uh, side has fell off that uh, hunt there. The uh, on or sw this uh, switch this switch is going to be a pain, so I think I'm going to have to unsolder that. That's a little bit too close, but it's connected to the battery lead, so I might take them off as well. So, from what we figured out, it's probably the converter not working in this. It's had some work done to it. That germanium diode there, I don't know if that's original. I might be wrong, it might be. Um, there's an RS capacitor there, but that might be original. So it's hard to say if this had work done to it. Interestingly, this driver transistor here looks like it's a mallard. So, uh, yes, it's an OC44. So I don't know if it's had things changed in it or not. I'm not a very good detective at working these things out, but... Uh, I guess the first thing is to make the electrolytics and the uh, oh, that one's leaking around the edge. Make the electrolytics disappear and the hunts, and just see where we are. See if the converter then starts. Right, so that's the negative and positive of the switch. I think I'll unsolder the pot. Just making a visual note of where it goes. Okay, the recap is complete. There's various different values in here, but I used 27 nanofarad in lieu of the 30 and 39 nanofarad in lieu of the 40 nanofarad. When it comes to the hunts, electrolytics weren't a problem um, so far. I haven't worked on the power supply yet, I just want to look at the radio. Now that noise I heard earlier, I thought was coming from the RF stage, but it isn't. Um, I've got the volume turned right down and I can still hear it. So it is the audio stage. I have had a tone generator in it. You can probably hear that hum, just me touched it with my finger. So the audio amp's working. So the next thing is, is to work out where the fault is. And there's so many different ways. I've got the manual for this one. I've got a voltage chart, so I could check voltages. I could stick some IF signal in and see if that comes alive. Let's have a look, what is that? It's 470 kilocycles, so. Um, I don't have a signal generator, or I don't know if I've got a signal injector though, but uh, it's certainly pretty deaf uh, at the moment, there's not a lot going on, since I know that rushing noise is coming from the amplifier, I think I'll start by putting an IF signal in and see if that's detected. Okay, so the first thing I've done is injected the, tempo, uh, the 470 um, into the point mark for alignment but I'm sticking quite a signal in on neg 7 but admittedly it is across the ferret rod um, but at least it shows that there's some demodulation going on in the radio um, but what I could do is just put it in some other points and see if it's louder although like I said the danger is that I've got it in an input where I'm shunt being shunted by the ferret rod and so I can't be 100% certain how much signal I'm actually putting in unless I check it with an oscilloscope well I've simply just got the 470 here, VARA capacitor. You should better hear that. That's on the converter transistor base. Uh, first IF. Yep, nice and loud. And now the second IF base. Absolutely nothing. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I'm a bit worrying, but it's interesting how you can hear it for this ba on this base. So it must be forcing its way through some, must be forcing its way through somewhere. But it's interesting that the base of that transistor isn't sensitive to um, anything at all. Okay, obviously as I go this way, the gain is reducing, but at least you know I've got neg seven on here. I'd expect this to uh, be responding in some way. I suppose the other thing I can do is just have a look at the uh, have a look at the uh, voltages. Okay, let's have a look what VT3 should be. Hopefully, without getting my head in the shot too much, it should be 0.95. 
there's going to be the emitter there on that resistor it's a little bit low um, base should be one volt is it one volt uh, yeah one volt and collector should be 7.2 that's a bit low so it tends to suggest it might even be is there a collector resistor in this? No, there's no collector resistor. It tends to suggest um, I need to check what the auxiliary supply is to know how much that is dropping by. There's a normal decoupling on the uh, it's on C22. I can find that. Just it might be useful to find that out. C22. Ah, oh, so the supply voltage is only 542. I'll have to check that because uh, that's a good indication of whether the set is drawing too much current on the receive side. Um, that seems a tad low when we're on a 9 volt supply so it tends to suggest someone's drawing too much power I would imagine but I will check to see if there's any other voltages that I could use to uh, work that out. So the 7, 6 to 80 ohm which decouples the supply to the RF section was slightly high but as the collector voltage is supposed to be 7.2 and that's still 5, 6, 7, something is still pulling it down. I've been looking at the emitter voltages and that's not really giving me a clue either because um, I was hoping that I would see a lot of current flowing through one of the emitter resistors higher than specified. Admittedly that one is higher but But uh, none of them look particularly high, they look low because the supply voltage is low. So I'm trying to think now what on earth is uh, pulling some of the uh, power away from there. And the, the supply current is 30 milliamps and that seems a little high for a portable radio. I'd thought more like 20. Very interesting. Uh, you can see the uh, supply voltage for the RF section is now where it should be. It's actually the collector from this transistor, I've disconnected it. When I reconnect it it drops considerably. I don't remember emit the emitter voltage being particularly high but on R10 if I I do remember testing it but then what it could be of course um, is it's leaking down the base somewhere. It's hard to tell with these germanium transistors. Also interesting thing suddenly got life as well. None of this makes a lot of sense so far. Well I didn't spot this straight away. Uh, here's the emitter resistor for the set of first IF. There's a hundred ohm resistor shunt in it at the back. What the earth's that about? I have found some other transistors in case there is a problem with it but that would explain why it's using a lot more current if it's been bypassed. Why has that happened? Interesting. Well, that voltage looks better now. We've got reception. So, that's good. So, I can put my uh, pile of spare transistors away. Well, maybe not. The, uh, there's still a lot of noise coming from that amplifier. Yeah, and it's not going away, so... Might have to look at the audio section, see where all that noise is coming from. I've drawn out part of the circuit of the radio. This is the 680 ohm and decoupling capacitor that drives the RF stages. Um, I should have really checked here first because obviously this was being pulled down to 5.7 volts. And the reason was, if somebody had put 100 ohms on this emitter resistor here on this stage of the IF. Um, and of course this started drawing a lot more current so it pulled the voltage right down which uh, didn't do the other stages much good they were under volted I guess um, this is the final IF here's the demodulation just a diode through a resistor there's a capacitor here to bypass the um, any RF that's still there then the audio is fed to the first stage amp this part of the circuit here is the AGC and as you can see it's fed back to the base of the first IF so by varying the base voltage you vary the gain of this stage so there is some sort of AGC in the system.
If I short out the base of the driver transistor, noise goes away completely. So it might be a noisy resistor, and I have had that, but that was more like a crackle, but that just sounds like the uh, voltages on it look a little bit high, so I'll see if I can find something equivalent to replace it with. Just having a look through my little pile of uh, NKT transistors. My drawer, just seeing what I can find. The audio wise, I think this is a ACY30, I think it's half a meg or something, so that sounds suitable. Um, also got some ACY22, so I'm just checking for gain and leakage. Maybe one of these might work. Well, that's an improvement. I can't hear any noise now. Oh, that looks a bit more like where it should be. Oh, good. Can't hear any hiss at all. Completely silent. Control the virus. Uh, oh, not that. Hello, I'm Esther, founder of. Right. Okay. So that's uh, working much better. I used an NKT. Uh, what was it again? ACY. Thirty drive the uh, audio output transformer, uh, input, audio splitter transformer should I say. Interesting is that Muller transistor has been used for bias for the two output devices. And they're original still. Anyway it's nice to put NKT back in there. Um, at least uh, keeps it original doesn't it? When I see a transistor with a gain, a germanium transistor with a gain of that much, I get a bit suspicious. 143, really? I don't think so. Um, it doesn't actually look that leaky, uh, but that's the collector leaky. It doesn't tell you where else it's leaky, I guess. Well, here's the power supply. It's very, very interesting. They've used half a transistor as a rectifier here. Anyway, what you basically got is full bridge rectifier. Smoothing, it's only 200 microfarad, and then you've got a transistor arranged in the conventional way for a regulation with the emitter going to the radio. You've got a separate winding here which produces a voltage and there's a 750 microfarad capacitor here to smooth it, going to the base. Any ripple on that base is going to come out, so it's going to need to be well smoothed. <clears throat> You've just got a preset, you just turn that up and down to get the right voltage to the radio. So as the current increases to the radio, this transistor will turn on harder. It will drop slightly here, but it won't be much. But it's not regulated. Well, it is regulated, but it's not proper regulated. So if the mains voltage drop, it's going to drop the voltage to the radio as well. But You've got this transistor here as a current amplifier, so it's going to be relatively well smoothed. With this such a small capacitor here, I would imagine there's quite a lot of ripple on here. So my next decision is, do I leave it like this, or do I add a Zener diode and make it into a more modern type of power supply? I, I'm not sure at this moment. Well, the transformer works, but my goodness, don't the old laminations rattle? I don't know if you can hear that. Good 16 volts on the uh, smoothing cap. Let's have a look at the reference voltage to the transistor. 10.9, a little bit on the high side. There is no load on it, admittedly. But that transformer has definitely got the rattles. Mm. Right, well, it isn't very original now, the power supply, but hey-ho. Not too many close-ups of my fingers. Right, nails. Right, um, I've changed it into a Zener power supply of a 9.1 volt Zener plus a 0.6 just to make sure it's definitely 9. Um, I found that the rectifier was going a little soft, it was it seemed to be dropping off a lot. It could be the transformer but I just decided to rebuild it just so it's reliable. And I uh, swapped the transistor over for something a little bit more manly. Um, but still a new market one, so that's uh, what I've done with that. And uh, should be a circuit here somewhere. And as soon as I push the button on the camcorder, of course I lose what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, there we go. So that's uh, what I've ended up with. Um, I'm not using the auxiliary supply. I just decided that 
to use that one and there's plenty of base current so it's unfortunate I didn't notice um, but uh, I actually have got a broken IF core um, and it's cracked and it isn't moving anywhere um, that's unfortunate this one's got a crack in it so I've got a feeling that one won't move either so uh, oops I also notice there's a lump out of the uh, RF one as well I didn't notice that uh, bit of a problem um, just leave the IF as it is it is relatively sensitive so uh, I might just have to leave that alone well I couldn't do much with the IFs I need to look back at my own footage to find out where all these wires go properly but never mind um, apparently to do the RF tuning you put it back in the case there's access to the uh, two trimmers on the capacitor now I'm not sure which is which <laughs> I'll have to see if it's on the diagram and you put the scale back on so presumably there's the hole for the uh, oscillator coil but you can't adjust the ferret rod when it's in can you? Hmm. well yes you can get at the oscillators off a bit. I find this interesting you've got to set the local oscillator up at 1546. I'm not sure where 194 meters is on this scale so that's uh, got me slightly confused. It says it has a range of 183 so I suppose you have to guess and C9 is which one it's the one at the bottom. So I guess it's going to be that old game of jogging the inductor in this capacitor. Oh, there we are. Mm -hmm. well, the interesting thing is, you set the oh, pain. Well, that's about right. I suppose I'm going to have to. Uh, go back down to 600 and hope it's uh, still a line there now. Um, the interesting thing is you line up the um, antenna coil at 1400 kHz so it's a split adjustment. So just tuning up the trimmer at 1400 kHz. thing is the wave change switch is in the way of it so it makes it a bit more difficult but Unfortunately the long wave trim is here so you can't seem to get at it from this hole in the case so I had to set the dial luckily it lined up so I was able to pull it out at uh, 1400 meters so I've ended up altering the position of the ferret rods they seem to be quite a little distance out I don't know why I'm also having a bit of fun this morning um, it probably won't show in the shot, but I'm just trying a shotty diode, a BAT85S in the detector stage, and uh, no problem, works fine to my surprise. So I wasn't sure if it would work, but uh, it does. So, because uh, I found a lot of replacement germanium diodes, I've found have, have had quite a high Ford resistance or very leaky so it's good to know that the uh, BAT85S actually works well I still got a bit of a hum but I thought to myself you know you can pull this back off with the mains in well no you can't there's a bracket here so there you go the back is locked you can hear it humming a bit oops made it worse now but I suppose when I get a moment I'll have the transformer out and I'll uh, see if I can uh, tighten the laminations up with it. Might even varnish it.
nice bit of a hum, but I'll see if I can fix those laminations with some uh, varnish when I can go out and get some, that is. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's always difficult to film myself in here. There's only just enough room for me to get back, even on the wide-angle lens. But uh, So, yeah, good sensitivity increase with the ferret rods uh, slid along, the uh, coil slid along. Um, don't know what was going on with that emitter resistor why that was put on. I'm now wondering if those two transistors in the IS stage are not original. Um, as I said, uh, Pete, about the rattling lamination, the only other problem I've got is I might not have the capacitor tight enough because sometimes the planetary gear slips a bit when I tune it. But it is a nice radio. I do like this. I, I saw it at a radio rally and thought, oh, I must have that because I just like the sloping sides, which I hope show up OK. It's interesting. I took a picture of my mobile phone and the uh, um, distortions caused by the lens um, actually caused it not to look like it had got sloping sides. So that's interesting. I'm just coming to the end of my furlough period, I think. So uh, um, this will probably be uh, one of the last videos I make now for a while. But uh, I've been listening to Caroline using the uh, loop to increase the sensitivity. Um, and that, that actually does quite a good job. So anyway. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'm rabbiting on as usual. I shall see you soon. And take care.